input shaping. It's a filter. It's a convolution. So we're going to talk today about what is input shaping, what is a convolution, what, what does it do for us, how do we set it up. Uh, but first, we'll show that we have here a uh, brushless motor. It's a Sanyu Danke with a 100,000 count absolute A encoder. And I've got it moving back and forth. You can see there's an overhanging mass at the end that's vibrating at a certain frequency. And we're going to use the convolution, convolution filter or the input shaping to try to get rid of that vibration. So we got a Zenus drive connected over the serial port with the B&B electronics, USB to serial adapter, the serial cable kit. I've got the motor's feedback connected to the feedback connector and a battery to keep alive the multi-turn. Single turn does not need a battery. 24 volts, mean well power supply, has to keep alive. AC power, 120 or 230 volts AC, single or three phase. And a STO bypass jumper so that I can enable my drive. Solid green light, drives enabled. The CME2 user's guide has a section on filters and talks about input shaping. So the basic idea from Mr. Smith at MIT was if you put a step command in and you run it through an input shaping filter, you can break that step into other smaller steps. And the, um, the period of that step is set to uh, multiple of the resonant frequency. So here... I have a mechanical frequency of resonance, so when I take my filter and divide it by that frequency, I, have, I get a, a unity point. And on this axis is the amount of vibration. So with the solid line, I get the zero vibration at this point when I set the filter frequency to the same as the mechanical frequency. Now, this dashed line is zero vibration derivative, so it breaks it down into further components to give us a wider band around the frequency of mechanical vibration. And you can see, even if you're off by 80%, you still get a considerable amount of vibration dissipation, which is important because usually your mechanical vibration is not a constant value it may vary based on temperature or length or a little variation in mass. So zero vibration derivative is a very useful concept. So I googled it. What's a convolution? And this Wikipedia came up. In mathematics, convolution is a mathematical operation on two functions. It produces a third function that is typically viewed as modified version of one of the original functions. Given the integral of pointwise multiplication of the two functions as a function of the amount that one of the original functions is translated. Well, there you go. And there's some pictures to go along with that. The basic idea is you put something in to the filter and you get something else out. So I'm going to use the CME2 scope. I've got CME2 version 7.1 with my Zenus Compact. And I'm just doing position moves back and forth, 100,000 counts, and just going halfway around, forward, then reverse. So in magenta, I have the profile velocity. In orange, I have the actual motor velocity. And in blue, I have the following error. We can see after the move is done, there's still some wiggling going on. And we can see that in the picture. It's a very high vibration after the move is done and a little bit while the move is done, a different frequency while, the, while we're making the move. Um, you know, one thing we can do to try to smooth up the move is a little S-curve. So the trajectory limits have an S-curve. And that might smooth out the resonance while we're moving. 
but it doesn't do much about the resonance at the end of the move. So if I have to wait for this thing to settle, I wait a long time uh, from 0.05 to 0.3 something. So maybe a couple hundred milliseconds or so. But what I'm interested in for the convolution or the input shaping is what's the frequency of the mechanical vibration. So I'll go to the measurement tab, click show cursors checkbox and move the first cursor to the peak and the second cursor to the peak. Look at point the delta in time, 0.12 seconds. So 0.12, that's the period in versus the frequency, 8.3 hertz, plus or minus a little bit. So that's what we're going to set the filter to. In CME2, configure filters, input shaping tab, zero vibration. Let's do zero vibration derivative. Let's give it a 8.5. Apply the filter. And let's make the move again in the positive directions first. There. So we can see the amplitude of the vibration after the move is extremely reduced. Let's take another look at this. So a considerable reduction in the vibration at the mechanical frequency has been achieved using a filter. Now you don't get something for free. A filter still puts a delay from input to output. So in again, magenta, here's our profile command, nice and smooth. And the trajectory velocity is broken down into components. So the, the move actually takes longer because the components take longer. But we're still in a similar target and there's less vibration or disturbance in the system. Not sure if we'll gain much with a trapezoidal profile, but let's try that out. So again, the command has a lot of jerk points, and we can see the velocity is broken down into several components to make the move. And actually, uh, the move is much shorter um, without the S curve. We get other fundamental vibrations um, at the at the jerk points, but the overall vibration uh, at the end of the move actually shortens the move time. Again, we can disable it. See the vibration? Lots of vibration at the end of the move. And we can turn it back on and see the reduction in the vibration. Yep, that's input shaping, a convolution. Uh, it's a filter that uh, is applied to the command, the profile command, and uh, can reduce the vibration in, in a system. An actual application may be a, a machine that shakes at certain frequencies, and we just want to try to keep the shake down. Um, if you have an XY table you're trying to move, you got to put the same filter in both X and Y. Um, otherwise, you might not be able to draw a straight line anymore. But that's because a filter adds a delay from the commanded to the actual. All right, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.